want to tell you something, that's going to be your freedom. That's right. Because again, as you say, there's so many people wrapped up in this. Yes, ma'am. And we need to talk about these things in the church. Yes, ma'am. It's not a condemnation. The devil will use it as a condemnation. Exactly. But you know what? The Bible says that he came to set you free. Yes, ma'am. You're a prisoner. He came to set you free. You're a prisoner of, a, of these addictions of pornography or the sexual perversion. Right. And he wants to set you free. Well, see, another thing, too, that there's a reason why it needs to be really brought up in the church and let the church deal with it. For, for years and years, our churches have started putting off for our government to do things, and that's why we're in a mess now. Yeah. It wasn't the government's place to be doing all this stuff. But one of the things that's shocking to me is that, that the biggest majority of the people that's looking at porn now is at the age from 10 to 14 years old. So it's not like our children don't know what's going on. They know quite well what's going on. They can tell adults things that would make the adult's face turn, turn red with blush. Well, I know a person who was at uh, a young age, first grade in school, was molested by an uncle, mm -hmm. and then got into all kinds of things yes, from that molestation. Right. And you see what happens is it travels mm -hmm. through the people. Right. And that's actually how mine really started. I seen the magazine first, but then I was molested by a cousin when I was just a, mm -hmm. a young boy. And then when I got into the military, me only 17 years old, I was molested by a staff sergeant psychologist there on the base. The place you'd feel the safest, or you'd think you'd be the safest in our military, but there in that Air Force military, I was molested by a staff sergeant. And so How'd that, that make you feel? Oh, it, it makes you feel like that you're the, that you're, first of all, that, that you've done something, and then you feel trapped, especially in that situation, because that's a man of authority, and you know that he can cause you some severe problems if he decides to blame it on you. But how do you get into that situation well, where for, that you're alone with this well, man? Well, for me, we had went over to a, a person's house innocently enough, and this is usually when a molestation takes place. It's either with family or friends or something like that. So I was with a friend, and he dropped uh, this guy off at another house and was supposed to be carrying me back to the base. And then he asked me if I'd ever went to an adult bookstore, and I told him no. And uh, so he said, well, would you like to go? Well, like I said, at 17, I was scared to death the fact that he was in the car to begin yeah. with. And I said, well, sure, we'll go. And, and when I walked through that door, I seen so many things that just floored me. Me being a, a, a Christian little boy brought up in a Christian home, in that, a was, tent meeting. that was far <laughs> beyond anything I'd ever seen. And then when we come out in the car and was going back to the barracks is when he, when he made his move. You have to be so careful. Yes, ma'am. Be careful with your children. Guard and protect your children. And who? Oh, wow. And like you said, that's one of the things I talk about in the book too. You got to guard these eyes. You got to guard these ears, and you got to guard this mouth. Mm -hmm. That little song, "Be careful, little eyes, what, what you, you see." see. But that's not just for kids. That's for uh, an adult uh -huh. too. We need to be careful. And it's everywhere. It's at our mm -hmm. magazine stands when we're checking out the the grocery store. It's mm -hmm. on our billboard. This is the thing that's on sells. the movies. Exactly. So uh, we've gotten very free. TV pop-ups. Yes, on your computers. But that's what our ministry deals with. It's, it's to help people that's been through such bondages, whether it's prostitution or whatever, that's what we're after. And we try to get these people back to where God wants them to be. Because everything that we go through in life is to be a testimony and help someone else, someone to, else. out through it. So. Are there still the temptations? The temptations never go away. They never go away. Now you can get to where you can handle it because of the power of God and you know not to go there. But just like with every other temptation, Anything can just slip in and that's it, you know, so you have to go. And if yourself. you yield one time, right. you can slide right back exactly. down that slippery that's slope. Just like an alcoholic. Just yep. like an alcoholic. And you just have to be free. Right. But I know a young man who has to go to Vegas, and when he goes, he takes a prayer partner because yeah. he got delivered from that's that. That's the other key. You have to have accountability, especially with uh -huh. this addiction. You've got to have accountability. I carry a, a man with me everywhere I go so that he can make sure that I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. He even stays in the room with me to make sure that, that nothing's going on. That you don't watch the wrong thing. That's and, right. And see, that's wisdom. Yeah. And yeah. that's how it has to be. That's right. Wow. This has been a good book, and I think that everybody, if you know somebody who's into pornography, read this book. Yeah. There's hope for you. I promise you. I want you to take a minute, talk to the camera, talk to the people. All right. Uh, you may find yourself in a bondage like, you've, like I was in, and a lot of times it feels like that you're all by yourself, but you're not by yourself. I'm, I'm telling you, no matter what you're in, no matter how rough it is, how bad it is, 
There's a lot of other people that's in the same position that you're in. Satan has no new tricks. He's using the same tricks over and over and over. And he, one of the things he uses is to keep us quiet. But the Bible tells us that we need to confess so that we can be healed. And, and unfortunately, we can't, we gotta be careful who we confess to. But he yes. said confess one to another too. And, and with us in our ministry, uh, if you want to confess something to us, then we keep it very quiet, especially any uh, well-known preachers and stuff like that. We keep it very confidential and we'll help you through that. And you, you want to contact us, we, uh, we have our ministry at uh, www.confessionofapreacher.com and there you'll find our, uh, our Servants of Love, our International LOVE Ministries where we uh, do all of our work in that. And we will be glad to be able to help you through any kind of situation you're going through. God's still God and He can deliver you no matter what it is and He can use you again. Don't feel like that you're left out because God can use you. Take just a real short prayer and pray for them. All right. Dear Lord Jesus, we thank you so much for being able to come into the throne of God. And God, I thank you more than anything for your grace and mercy after yes. the salvation. Father, it may seem like that other people would throw us away, but no matter where we go and how far down we go, mm -hmm. if we'll turn around and look back to you, you said you're faithful and just mm -hmm. to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Mm -hmm. I thank you for grace and mercy. I thank you that you're a God of love and regardless of what people make like, that God is just a God of wrath. Mm -hmm. I know that you're a God of love. I know that through your love and your mercy that you're wanting to bring us in as mm -hmm. good children children and you being a good daddy taking mm -hmm. good care of us. So Father, for anyone that's bound right now, I pray that you'll deal in their heart and I pray that you'll rebuke Satan in Jesus' name for the power that you have and deliver him. Amen. Amen. Wow. Get this book. You're going to want it. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Confessions of a Preacher by Roger Bilbrey is a straightforward look at the hidden truths of one preacher that led a double life. Read Bilbrey's story of choosing to live a life that was contrary to the Word of God and the price that he paid for this lifestyle. Within the pages of this eye-opening book, you will learn that no matter what you have done within your life, God's plan for you is still great and His compassion unending. Don't continue to struggle, but learn how one man, with God's help, overcame addictions that had held him captive for years. Confessions of a Preacher is available for this buy-the-book offer of $15. Simply call 888-725-8033 and request offer number 253. That's 888-725-8033. Request offer number 253. Buy the book today. By the Books, Dorothy Spaulding opens her heart in her book, We Walk by Faith, Not by Sight, a story that will connect with every reader. As Dorothy shares her real adventure in faith, walking the cross thousands of miles throughout the United States for eight years, witnessing and challenging people to be bold witnesses for Jesus. Order your copy by calling 888-725-8033 for just $14.95 plus shipping and handling. Ask for offer number one. 40.